morning everybody. Um, so I'm Lindsay Woodward and I'm going to be talking to you today about how to write an effective marketing plan. But first of all, to let you know why I'm qualified to be talking to you about this today. So I have nearly 20 years experience working in marketing. Um, in my time, I've managed whole marketing departments and it was only four years ago that I opened up my own marketing company. And I have worked across the full marketing mix. I've pretty much done any, everything with the fact that I've worked in so many companies. Um, I am a CIM qualified chartered marketer. I have been a chartered marketer for eight consecutive years now. And in 2020, I was nominated as a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Marketing as well, which I'm particularly proud of. Um, I'm a, strat uh, a specialist in strategy and planning, but I also love to do uh, copywriting. I've got my degree in writing, so words are really my thing. But planning, let's all just talk about planning today. Because if you don't have a plan, like most people don't, actually most companies don't have a marketing plan, you are by very definition just guessing what to do. And it's the same if you were gonna get in your car and you were gonna drive somewhere and you didn't know where you were going, you're just gonna meander around. And that's what most companies do. They do ad hoc marketing, they just do marketing as opposed to work towards business goals. And that obviously is never gonna give you the best chance of success. So I'm gonna teach you today how to write a really simple marketing plan that's going to give you much more focus and give you a better chance of getting uh, the goal, reaching the goals in your business that you want. So the first thing that I always like to say is don't think what do I want to achieve, think what problem do I want to solve. Straight away if you've got that problem solving mindset it, it clicks you into gear that bit much. It can be seem really difficult to say well I want to achieve this sort of this goal, this I want to sort of get to here. If you actually say, do you know what? I haven't got enough business, I need to solve this problem. My competitor's stealing all my business, I need to solve this problem. Or that new product's launch, nobody knows it exists, I need to solve that problem. It changes the way that you approach things. So think first, what is wrong in your business that you need marketing to help solve? And you'll be surprised how many problems in your business that marketing can solve. So have a think about that. And when you've got that problem in mind, the first step isn't then to say, how am I gonna do it? The first step then is to take a step back, actually, and do some market research. If you don't know fully everything about your market, everything about your customers, about your competitors, about your business, how are you gonna actually make proper informed decisions? You are just, again, guessing, and guessing will not get you results. I've never seen anybody do ad hoc marketing and really significantly grow. So do some market research. Don't have to spend ages on this. You could do, big companies might spend six months, but if you're a small business, a few hours will give you so much information and I guarantee it will tell you things that you didn't realize. There's four things I recommend you look at. Number one, have a think about the things outside of your control. So have a little, stop for a minute and think, right, what about politics? What regulations are there that I need to take into consideration? Economics, how is that gonna affect my business? In the future, how has it affected it in the past? Um, technology, think about actually not what you prefer, but what your customers are doing. So what, what are they actually doing when they order from you? Are they online? Do they like being online? Is it the best way for you to sell to them? What's their experience when working with you? Um, legal, what are the, any legislation that you need to abide by? Anything coming up? When was the last time you actually looked at what the real regulations were around your business? Things like GDPR, all the regulations are changing since we've come out of Europe. So when was the last time you actually said, you know what, am I doing everything that's right? Am I protecting my business? And am I protecting my customers correctly? And then social, actually knowing little bits about your customers, about what their preferences are, about what they believe in, about what they care about. And a great example is, if you said to somebody, would you want to buy from a sustainable business, they would all go, yes, of course we would. And then if you actually ask people who they buy from, they probably buy from very few sustainable businesses. Because what we do and what we say are very different things. So you need to actually start saying, what do my customers do and what's going to matter to them? Actually start thinking about that. The more that you know about your customers, the better you'll be. Customers then really do get to know your customers. Um, I once on a marketing course and we were told, know your customers, then know your customers. You can never know them too much. So first of all, who could you sell to? I am not a fan at all of saying to people, think about your ideal customer. Not one customer that I've ever worked with of my own have I ever had that conversation with. What we say instead is, let's look at 
every different person that you could sell to. Let's think about the whole of your potential market. And then you start looking at the pros and cons. And suddenly, rather than narrowing down to this tiny little ideal customer that you'll become so focused on, you're actually looking at two or three different customer types. You're opening up your market in a way that you've not done before. So actually say, who is everybody that I could sell to? What are the pros and cons of them? And then you're making informed decisions. You're opening up your mind. And things might um, pop in your head that you never even thought about before. This normally happens. And it's quite exciting. Well, actually, I didn't even think I could sell to these type of people. And it could be types of businesses. It could be types of people. It depends who your customers are. Next is competitors. When was the last time you really looked at what your competitors are doing? Know what your competitors are doing. Um, how do you compare against them? What are their messages? What are they selling? What's the latest thing they're bringing out? Make sure you keep following them on social media and do that social listening. Just keeping tabs on them will make sure that you can always differentiate from them clearly and that's a very important thing to do. And lastly, looking internally at your own business, the four P's, price, product, place, and promotion. So price first, actually say, why did I come up with this pricing structure that I've got? Was it just guesswork? Was it, did you really analyze the market? Is it actually, are you too cheap really from what your customers could pay? Is it time to put your prices up? And also as well with price, if you're like, I really want to charge high prices, but then you make all your documentation in Word and it looks a bit poor, are you sending out that same message? Perception is everything in marketing. So if you want to go high-end prices, everything's got to look glossy and high-end with it. The same as if you've got these fancy brochures and then you're really at the cheap end of the market, you're sending out those mixed messages. Make sure everything is aligned to who you want to be. Product or services, if that's what you do. When was the last time you actually said, what's working in my business? Where is the best selling? What's not working? Do you actually know this? How are you tracking this? Have a little honest chat with yourself about what's going on in your business. You'll be so surprised, actually, if you just take a look. You might, um, things come up that you never really expected. So are you selling things actually just not working for you, you should get rid of? Or are you saying, actually, I didn't realize how powerful this product was, I need to do more of that. Place, where do you sell? And this really matters with your customers. So if you're selling to a lot of uh, more elderly people and everything you do is on vastly in the online world, is that really the best way to connect with them? So have a think, where do you sell and how easy is? What is that customer journey? Have a real honest discussion with yourself to say, am I really optimizing every avenue here? And promotion, have a look at all the promotion that you've done. So have a look at your Google Analytics, have a look at that email campaign you sent out, have a look at your social media, what's actually going on? Because it doesn't matter if you get a thousand likes on any post you do, if none of it turns into business, it's completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter. If, you, if nobody's actually coming to your website, and nobody's looking at what you do, it's just meaningless statistics. What you wanna say is actually, is my social media helping me get new business? If it isn't, there's a problem, regardless of how fantastic it might look on the page. So actually really break it down. Or if you say, do you know what, I've not really got anything to look at here, then say to yourself, do you know what, maybe I haven't been doing enough. There's no right or wrong here, it's about having an honest chat with yourself. Now you've got all your stats, now you've had an honest look at your business. The next step is to start working on your marketing strategy. And when I say strategy, people go, oh, no, no, that's not for me, that's a scary word. Oh, I love it, I'm obsessed with strategy, but a lot of people run off screaming when I say it. So actually, I'm gonna teach you how to write a really simple strategy and what it is, and actually it will really help bring structure to your marketing. So the first step is to do a SWOT. So take all that great research you've just done, doesn't matter whether you spent an hour or a day, it doesn't matter. You've spent a bit of time actually getting some facts together. Now put them in a SWOT. So your strengths and your weaknesses, that's you as a business, that's internal, and then your opportunities and threats are the other things in the market. Actually put it into a table and things will start to jump out at you. You'll start noticing actually, do you know what? There's way more weaknesses in my business and strengths, that alone, is an alert that you should be aware of. Actually, do you know what, there's loads of threats in the market. How can I use some of my strengths to try and combat some of these threats? You'll start to see it all jump out at you when it's laid out. If you've never done this, 
it's such a fantastic thing to do. I know I've done this with so many clients and the things that have jumped out and they're like, do you know what? I never even looked at it like that before. It can give you so many answers and it's such a simple thing to do. And from here, look at it and just say, what do I need to achieve in my business? So actually, you'll look at it and I promise you the answers will come to you. It's amazing. It's like magic. It really is. So when you do your strategy then, you take that and you need to write a strategy. Four elements, that's all you need. Four elements, it could be four sentences. Really doesn't have to be any harder. This is what a marketing strategy is. Number one, what are your objectives? What is it you actually want to achieve in marketing? And remember, this is marketing, not sales. So we, marketing isn't going to get you lots and lots and lots of business. It's going to get you leads. So you actually have to have that mindset. Is it that you want to have more leads in the business? Is it that you want to um, make sure that you steal more market share from your competitors? What is it? And make sure they're smart so that is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and timely. So don't just say, I want to grow my business. You've got to say, how much by and by when? And make sure that it actually is relevant to the problem you're trying to solve. So if your problem was trying to solve was that nobody knew about this new product and then you're like, well, actually, I want to... Um, uh, get more brand awareness, they're not aligned. Align your marketing objectives with your original problem. Next is segmentation. So go back to that lovely list of customers that you put down and actually say, right, where is the low hanging fruit here? Who are the best customers that I could get? And actually choose two or three, they're called segments. Choose two or three segments, two or three customer types that you could sell to. Why would you ever just wanna to sell to one customer type? Choose two or three and say, actually, the, if I try to focus on these, it's gonna get me a lot more business. Thirdly, targeting. So of those three segments, what are you going to target them with? What of your product or services is relevant to each of them? And you could have one product for each segment, and that's three different things in your marketing. That's not actually that hard to do, but suddenly you're opening things up to yourself in a way that you might have not thought of before. You're looking at more products and more, um, and more segments. And actually, you're not saying that for that segment you're not going to you're just gonna ignore all your other products. It just makes it easier. So if I just talk about copywriting in what I do, it's a really easy conversation, although I offer much more. I offer all sorts of marketing services. Just choosing one is easy to start that conversation and once you've hooked them in, then you talk to them about everything else. That's the idea, is keeping it simple and stripped back. And finally, positioning and messaging. So what is your position? How do you differentiate in the market? How are you going to put that marker in the, stand, in the sand that says you're different to your competition? So think of some sort of key marketing message that you can put out there that's going to say, this is who I am and this is what we do that's different. And then stick to it. Consistent and persistent. That's what you need to be in marketing. Don't have a marketing message and then think in six weeks it's not working and change it. Because straight away you're just starting all over again. It will take months and months and months for it to work. But if you think it's always going to take months and months and months, so every time you restart, you're putting yourself back at the starting line. If you really want a strategy to work, it's going to take a long time, but the results can be massive in the end. You've got to stick to it. Nobody cheats the system. You have to stick to it if you want those results. And lastly, your marketing plan. So that says, what do we, decisions we need to make to get where we need to be. And now you've got to put in some sort of tactics to make all that happen, to bring it to life. Now I, personally, this is my idea, I always say to customers, let's look at the nine areas of the marketing mix. And this is when I say to people, everybody says to me, social media, let's do social media. There are so many more areas to marketing than social media. And as I'm going to demonstrate, it's one tiny area of one ninth of the marketing mix. There are so many areas. So I say to people, look at every single one of these areas and decide what you can do in as many of them as possible. The more different things you do in marketing, the better results you'll get. An integrated approach always delivers better results. There is so much evidence out there. So first of all, is branding, and this is anything where your logo is on. So it could be that, you know what, the positioning, I don't like what we've been doing to date, let's start again, and you want a new logo. It could be that you say, you know, we need some pens, we need a nice pop-up banner, whatever it is, anything that's got your logo on, start thinking here, what could we write down that's, that's relevant here? It might be that there's nothing, but if you actually force yourself to sit and think about each area, you're making conscious decisions not to do it, as opposed to forgetting something, and that's the trick of this, and this is why I work with these people and I set this system up. Next 
digital. Not social media, digital. Social media is one part of this, but actually you can start to see it's a small part of what you could be doing. And now, because you know who your customer targets are and what you're going to target them with, suddenly knowing what platforms to be on makes it really easy. So if you're talking a young, um, a young um, consumer market, you wouldn't be on LinkedIn, you're not going to be on Facebook, probably TikTok maybe, Instagram, um, if it's female, Instagram definitely works better for the female market, YouTube's great for the male market. You can actually start making more informed decisions because you've got that platform already of who who you're selling to and what you're selling to them. Uh, in digital as well, you've got things like email marketing, um, there could be anything that you do in the online world, your website in there, anything in the online world at all. What is it that you could do in this area? Start writing it down. What do you need to do in your website? It could be there's nothing. You really like what you've got already, but you start making these decisions. PR and advertising. PR is a vastly underutilised part of the marketing mix. Nobody ever says to me, I've got a great idea for a press release. But I mean, just imagine what you could do if you've got, it's got to be newsworthy, it has to actually be news. You can't just say, you know, uh, we're brilliant, look who we are. But if you've got any sort of bit of news in your business, you've won an award, you've, um, you've hired a new member of staff, you're growing. If there's something that's different or interesting in your business, put it out as a press release, share it on social media, contact the local press, um, put it on your website. It's amazing what you can do with it. Then turn it into a blog. Why not do a little video on it, a podcast on it? Suddenly, from one little bit of news, you've got like 10 different types of content. Squeeze the living daylights out of everything you do. But don't just think everything's got to be promotional. And news can be a great way to get different, um, to get different messages out there. And advertising as well. Um, Advertising really does work if it's done properly. It's a long game, but actually, if nobody knows you exist, you're never going to be able to sell to them. It's as simple as that. So advertising can really back up what you do. Literature. So if you're going to an event, um, do you need any type of literature? Do you need brochures to give away, pamphlets? Would it be great that you could have something to download off your website, people? You think, oh, put on as an attachment to an email. Have a think. Never just think, I need a brochure. Think, where well, there's a gap, and what would be really good to fill that gap? So do it the other way around. Um, so is there anything? It might be that there's nothing again, but it's better to say there's definitely nothing than just miss it out completely. Database. So you've decided you want to send out e-newsletters, but have you got a database? If not, you need an action to say, how am I going to build that database? Are you going to buy some data? Are you going to put a link on your website? Are you going to ask people, can I send you my newsletter? How are you going to build that database? And also, how secure is it? Have you got a CRM system? All of this falls under the domain of marketing. How are you going to protect that data? How secure it is? Are you looking after your customers? Is it all um, meeting the current legislation? Customer acquisition. Um, so you could argue that a lot of this is about customer acquisition, but actually this to me is your campaign mentality. Put it in here. So you know you want to get those leads in. This is where you do that specific lead generation activity. So are you going to do a hook, a discount, some sort of promotion, an ebook to try and get people to look at what you're doing, download it, and you build up your database and get some leads in? What is it you could do? It could be a themed around the season, so a Halloween competition, an Easter competition. That's that deliberate customer acquisition mindset. And again, you, you might need some extra branding, you might need to do digital work, you might do some PR around it. All of the nine areas do link in with each other, but it's about you saying, what, what could we do here that's that real lead generation excitement that I could build around what I want to do? Customer retention. So easy to forget about those current customers when you want to grow and you think, I've got to get a new business, and then your current customers suffer. Actually, some of the best ways to grow a business is to just sell more to current customers. You've already done the hard work, so what more could you sell to current customers? How can you keep them loyal? What could you do? Do you send it, uh, a monthly email to customers? Have you got some sort of newsletter? How do you communicate with them? Have a little think about that, because actually, if you could sell more to current customers, you're going to grow your bottom line with very little effort. Events, not to be forgotten about, can be costly, but can also get great returns. So obviously there's networking, um, but it could be that you go to exhibitions, you run webinars or seminar, seminars, there's lots of different things you could do. So what could you do that gets out that you're going to see fewer people in one go, but could get you those great returns? There's lots of different things you could do there. And then obviously think about how you're going to promote it, how you're going to get that 
database, how your rugs, so all the nine areas start mixing with each other. And lastly, internal communications. Obvious if you're in a big company, but still as relevant if you work on your own because you very rarely just work on your own. A lot of people might outsource. It's just about everybody, every stakeholder, anybody connected to your business, make sure that they know who you are and what you're doing and they're not gonna trip up and contradict anything you're doing. Just about making sure that you protect this strategy. So, to summarize, Always work to a key overall objective. Think about a problem you want to solve in your business and then say, how am I going to solve it? Do your research first so it is built on facts and you're not guessing. Guesswork will get you nowhere. Good instinct actually isn't the best thing to do. Build it on facts. Create a strategy to build your plan on. It's like if you don't have a strategy, it's like building a house with no foundations. It will fall apart because you were doing ad hoc stuff. And then look at all areas of marketing when choosing your tactics. The more that you can do in variety, and it hasn't got to be costly, it's just about having different ideas, I promise you the better results you'll get. It's not a coincidence. So just to end, um, I do have a monthly newsletter that goes out just full of marketing tips. That's all it is. Um, so you can look on my website if you're interested in getting some monthly marketing tips. Or the long version of what I've just said is actually in my marketing book, which you can buy from Amazon. So uh, if you'd like to just get a bit more detail, you just take a look at my book, all the details in there. But that's everything from me. Thank you very much for your time.